I think my life is in two spaces at the moment. There's a personal journey and there is a journey that I take with others. And I value both of them equally. And there's a time when I'm saying, you know, now I am really feeding myself as an artist in order for me to continue to feed the rest. My name is Gregory Vuyane Makoma, all the way from Johannesburg, South Africa. I'm so excited that you guys are here to be with him. Please help me in welcoming Gregory Makoma. I come from a township which is really seen as a cultural melting point. And also it has a, a huge history that looks at colonial oppression. So those complexities inspire me to create the work in order for me to turn my own disadvantages into advantage. It was taking really everything that was ugly and I made it beautiful. I was able then to sell that to, to the world because the world was also interested in what is your view of the place you come from. And I was giving the world my own view of the place that I come from. It's like Shakespeare was living in, in Johannesburg when he was writing all of his tragedies and love stories because that's what you find in South Africa. There's always a story, there's always something to write about, to dance about, to sing about. I, I call it a stage. I could have been whatever I wanted to be. You know, I could have been a doctor if I chose to be, and being a dancer, it was really something that I really wanted to do. It's, it's the passions that was driving me, but I could have been anything. I grew up there as a child, I think I was nine or ten years old. The one person that really influenced my work was Michael Jackson. And because at the time we had a lot of chaos in our township of Soweto, for the first time I was seeing someone who was black on our television screen who was portrayed in a positive manner. And that became really an immediate connection. When I saw Trila, I said, I want to take dance to create the same kind of an emotion that I felt. childhood memories are still very much part of my movement aesthetic because um, I really still draw and without consciously saying I am drawing back from that movement aesthetics and forms, it's, it's happening automatically and I think because it's something that has embedded in my body and, and memory, it's something that really you cannot just erase. It's part of you, it becomes part of your culture. Everybody says, you know, you must be living the American dream. And I say, you know, um, not, not really, because um, it's, it's not an American dream. For me, it's, it's a South African dream to be able to break barriers. Doing the American tour, it's also about connecting ourselves with the community of black Americans, because primarily there are parallels within our, our histories. Um, there's, there's suffering, there's joy, um, there's also that uncertainty, there's also an identity crisis, um, are the ones that we can be able to, to, to create a discourse and be able to come together and have a discussion that can better inform who we are and, and maybe go away with a, a, a better knowledge of who we are. I 
presently what is happening is that we're trying so much to find comfort within our own discomforts and it's when we accept that there will be discomforts within our diff within our comfort zones um, the better we are as a society It's simple to say people of different cultures and traditions can live together. It's a simple ideology and, and it's an ideal that we want to achieve. <laughs> but at the same time, it's a very complex uh, ideal to achieve. because life is not simple, and history tells us that.